ever considering selling, but the task of getting your home ready is overwhelming? This video is for you because I will break down some simple stress-free steps to managing your clutter so you can focus on getting your home looking its best. Hi there, I'm Dawn McGee, your neighborhood friendly real estate agent, where I specialize in helping sellers step-by-step -step move on up here in beautiful Nova Scotia. There are four principles to keep in mind with decluttering. If you haven't used it in one year, get rid of it. If it is broken, doesn't work, can't be fixed and won't be fixed, get rid of it. If it can be replaced for under $5, get rid of it. If it no longer brings you joy, get rid of it. First off, have a supply of clear garbage bags totes, zip ties, Ziploc bags, and labels. You're gonna organize everything into four categories. Keep, donate, recycle, and trash. Each time, gather all the same items in one place, such as towels, before you go through them and put them into these four categories. Then, you're gonna discard first, as in throw out the trash or take things to the donate bin. This gives you space to organize the rest of the keep items. So store things according to space, not the amount of use it gets. So on day one is a whole house purge, such as getting rid of the obviously broken furniture and broken appliances, uh, winter boots and clothes that no one has worn for the past five seasons, junk mail laying around, and those 20 pair of garden shoes. <laughs> For day two, tackle the drunk junk drawers and the catch-alls. These are the public dumping grounds, so to speak, where everything accumulates. Screws and hardware that you haven't used in over a year or don't know what they're for. Um, hardened glue, uh, booklets and instruction manuals for items that have long gone. Dollar store gadgets that you've never used. Day three is for the cupboards, the kitchen and the bathroom. Get rid of Tupperware without lids, uh, empty yogurt and, and butter tubs, pots and pans that have lost their joy or their Teflon, excessive dishes such as, well, not wine glasses, <laughs> um, and small appliances that you've never actually used in years either. Day four, you can take on the pantry. That's all the food storage. Expired or stale items, of course, get rid of them. Uh, repackage and condense similar items. Discard broken, broken packaging or boxes. Day five is for bedroom drawers. This can be the most satisfying and the most difficult. Start with the unmatched socks, of course. They're never coming back. Stained clothes or ones that need fixing, let them go. As well as items that no, no longer fit or you have outgrown. Okay, we're getting there. If you're finding value in this content, uh, please be sure to like and uh, subscribe to my channel. I have a few more days to go, but uh, I'm saving the most important tip for the end, so stick around. Closets are to be tackled on the sixth day. Clothes or shoes that have never quite fit right or not comfortable, a little too short, a little too itchy, get rid of them. Uh, the ones that you've tried on and put back multiple times, get rid of them. Day seven is for the bedrooms. Again, get rid of the broken furniture that can't be fixed. Get rid of excessive knickknacks or collections that no longer bring you joy. Uh, go through your jewelry box and get rid of the missing and broken items. Also, get rid of the exercise equipment and ironing boards, uh, stuff that's not supposed to be there. Day eight is for tackling the specialty rooms. Throw out the broken toys or things that can't be repaired anytime soon. Remove items that don't fit the purpose of that room. Go through and sort papers that you need to get rid of and items uh, that don't give you joy. Saving just a few pieces of your child's art will have more significance than saving every creation they made. 
a good time to sort and have often uh, items uh, close at hand that you will need to list a house, such as tax bills and warranties, is a good time to set these aside. Finally, we have day nine, declutter the garage and attic. Get rid of those mementos, um, those matchbooks from weddings, uh, seasonal sports gears that uh, haven't seen any uh, action in years, uh, broken tools and equipment that have missing parts, leftover building supplies uh, that haven't been used in years as well can go, empty paint cans or hazardous materials, uh, they need to go to their special uh, recycling plants. Decluttering a house is a major step in getting your home ready to sell. It will help to make the great, a great first impression on buyers who come to view, but it will also make your home seem bigger and more cared for and more spacious. Decluttering your house before you list also shows the potential buyer that you are more serious about selling your home and that you've taken care of the home and it will help to keep the buyer viewing your property more focused on the features of the home and not uh, looking at all your knickknacks or personal items. The last and most important area to declutter is your brain. Decluttering the home is often a nostalgic uh, series of events and brings back many memories. So it is most important to declutter these emotions and detach yourself from your home. Now that you know the steps to start decluttering the items in your home, check out my next video that deals with letting go of the family home, where I will give you some tips for sellers to wrap their head around detaching from one home so they can start looking forward to making memories in their new home. If you would like some personal tips on getting your home ready for market, click on my link below so we can set up an appointment. Till then, I'm Don McGee.